What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie, and we actually had a whole different episode planned out for this week until last night. I got a text out of the blue asking if we needed a new cleaner. And we actually do need a new cleaner in this particular market. So we were taking some time to write out this list of questions we had for her, and we got to thinking, hmm, I bet you might have some questions on what you might need to ask a cleaner when hiring them. You might also be wondering how to find a reliable cleaner and how to set the mutual expectations for their work. If that sounds like you, then hit that like button and let's dive into finding, hiring, and keeping a good cleaner for your short-term rental property. But first, a little backstory on why we're looking for a new cleaner. We have a property that we manage remotely and we've been increasingly disappointed with the cleaner there. Their cleaning quality has actually been fine. We really haven't had any complaints about the cleanings, but it's their communication that has been severely lacking. I was gonna say, or lack thereof. Yeah. Lack of communication. This all sort of stems from the fact that they refuse to use our scheduling software. So they're doing all the scheduling on their own, but they haven't been communicating when they're not gonna be there to clean on the day that the guest checks out or letting us know when they're gonna be there to clean. So for example, yesterday we had a guest check out and they didn't show up to clean and then they didn't respond when I reached out to say, hey, are you gonna clean today? And then when I followed up this morning, they said, oh, well, maybe we'll have it done today, but it would be 5 p.m. at the earliest. And the problem there is that that forces us to block that night from booking. In this case, it's a Friday night and we've been getting a lot of last minute bookings in all of our markets. Mm -hmm. And so blocking a Friday night for a cleaning that's been scheduled for the last three weeks for yesterday is pretty disappointing. Let us know in the comments if you've been seeing a lot of last minute bookings too. We're curious because we've been seeing it a lot in all of the markets that we operate in. But Anyway, we always like to work with our cleaners if we have a pain point. We're not just going to say like, oh, you messed up, you're fired. But this is a communication issue that we've addressed several times now, and it doesn't seem to be getting received. So there's no saying, I see your point, and we'll be sure to tell you if we're not gonna be there, or we're gonna really try to be there on checkout day like you've requested. So unfortunately, it's probably time to part ways. So now we're on the hunt for a new cleaner, and coincidentally, Kylie gets a text from a cleaner in this market, and they used to work for this particular company that we've been talking about quite the scandal. That was a lucky coincidence that she reached out, especially on the day that we're, you know, kind of reaching a point of frustration and thinking about switching the cleaner. It's not always easy to find a new cleaner and especially a good one. When you're looking for a cleaner, whether you're first starting out or you're looking to make a change, there are a couple avenues that you can explore. The first would be to talk to your realtor. Your realtor, especially if they're one experienced in the short-term rental market, should have a pretty good list of cleaners and other skilled trades that you might use and they'll be willing to share those with you. The second place that we like to check is local social media groups. See if your city has a local group on Facebook or the app Nextdoor, and you can write a simple post asking for recommendations for a house cleaner. Not everyone will be specialized in short-term rentals, but I wouldn't necessarily rule them out because of that. You just need to make sure that you have really clear expectations set, which we'll cover later in this video. The third place we look is online, Google or Yelp or other service listing places. And a fourth option is apps or websites that are intended to match cleaners and hosts for either a one-time or an ongoing fee. One example of this is Turnover BNB. We don't have any direct experience with any of these, so there aren't any particular ones that we can say, you know, are great. But just know that that is an option and worth researching. One thing I want to add is tread lightly before you go messaging other hosts and asking for a recommendation for their cleaner. Some might do it if they only have one property and you know, they don't mind, you know, their cleaner getting extra work. It's kind of like having a really good babysitter. You don't want to go sharing their name and number all over town or they're not going to be there when you need them for your date night. All right, so you've found a list of potential cleaners to call, but now the next thing is what should you be asking them? A first question should be whether or not they have past experience with short-term rentals. If they haven't, ask if they're open to it and then describe what some of the constraints will be. You know, if you allow same-day turnovers, they might be required to complete a cleaning between 10 and three or whatever your checkout and check-in times are, and they need to be comfortable with that. It's also good to know how flexible they can be with scheduling. So are they going to require a week's notice to schedule a cleaning or will a couple of days suffice? If a guest 
guest comes to you the day before checkout and says they want to stay an extra day or two, is it going to be a big deal if you push the cleaning out for one or two days? Most of the cleaners that we work with, all of the cleaners that we work with currently are very flexible and that's an important feature for us. Our next discussion item would be laundry. For most of our properties, cleaners prefer to do the laundry on site, but there are some that either don't finish in time or maybe they just like to do it off site and then they return it the next clean. Hopefully you've checked out our sample inventory list and you've got your house well stocked with easy to clean, easy to launder linens and towels. And spares and spares, but if you don't have those things, we'll leave a link to our sample inventory in the description below. So if they're on board with the time constraints, with the flexibility, with the laundry, then you also wanna make sure they know how imperative it is for you both to have a really strong communication channel. This back and forth relationship is really important because the cleaners are the first set of eyes on the house after the guest has left, and you wanna make sure that they're comfortable and willing to let you know if there's any maintenance issues, if there's anything that's broken, left behind, these kinds of things all need to be reported to you so that you can address them. It's also good to pass along praise to them when they do an especially good job. Sometimes they'll get noticed by guests or get noticed by us. You know, it's always obvious when a cleaner takes pride in their work and getting some positive reinforcement and support from us, we think that helps. It's an easy thing, but it's also so easy to slip into this habit of only giving them negative feedback or only reaching out when they've made a mistake or that they've missed something in the cleaning. One thing that we've been implementing is when we get a review that specifically mentions that it was a really clean house. We'll take a screenshot of it on our phone and just shoot a text to them and say, hey, we got this great review. Thanks for your hard work. We cleaned our own properties for mm -hmm. over a year and we know how hard and sometimes disgusting it can be to clean a short-term rental after some nasty guest. And so we want them to know how much we appreciate them on a regular basis. Yeah. So back to communication, we also want to know if the house is especially messy and that's something we can consider when we go to write guest reviews. We also need to know if there's anything missing or damaged so we can get replacements right away. And you should also encourage your cleaner to let you know about low stocks on any consumable items. The next thing is to get a cost estimate. So if this cleaner is familiar with STRs, then most likely they're going to ask you for a link to your listing and also property specifics like number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage of the house. Even then, many of them will wanna do an on-site walkthrough to give you the actual price. This is a good chance to go through all the details of the house with them, as well as to let them know about any extras, like maybe cleaning patio furniture, or using a leaf blower to tidy up the yard. If you have a barbecue, add that to their list. And we even know of some cleaners who will drain water from above ground hot tub and refill them during their turnover cleaning. Basically, just try and make sure you capture all the tasks you want them to do so they can give you the most accurate price estimate. Next up for discussion is how you'll handle scheduling. If you just have a single property, then manual scheduling probably won't be too much of a burden on you. But if you do plan to scale, a scheduling program and task software has been indispensable for us. We use and highly recommend Breezeway. Cleanings are scheduled and then tasks are pushed to the assigned cleaner automatically. But then you can also go in, add notes or add secondary tasks and the cleaner sees that when they get to the property. They can log any damage Images or missing items in the app as well as report maintenance issues. We did a full video on all of the apps and websites that we like to use for our short-term rental business and we covered Breezeway pretty in-depth in that video if you'd like to check it out. We'll also leave a link in the description below that you can use to sign up for Breezeway and get a hundred dollar credit towards your account. Yeah so check that out but more of the story here is just make sure you and the cleaner are on the same page for scheduling. Next is everyone's favorite topic, insurance. We've talked in the past about how important it is to have insurance for your property, but it's also important to have your cleaner and other service providers who visit the house have their own general liability insurance as well. This protects you as the owner or manager if the cleaner were to damage anything at the property or have some sort of mishap while they were on site. If you encounter any resistance by your cleaners or providers to get insurance, you can also explain to them that it benefits them as well because it doesn't leave them personally financially burdened by some liability claim against them. And one thing that we've learned in our experience with talking with uninsured cleaners is oftentimes they will bid a job considerably lower than an insured cleaner will. So what we've done in the past is we'll say, okay, thank you for your quote for $175 per clean. We're really interested in hiring you, but no insurance is a deal breaker for us. We're actually willing to pay you $200 per clean. So with that increased price, would you be willing to explore getting a general liability policy? The costs of a general liability policy are going to vary by state and locale and a bunch of other factors. But in our experience, 
with providers, if they're a sole proprietor, that cost is going to be somewhere between eight fifty and a thousand dollars per year. In our experience, not insurance advice, which breaks down to between seventy and eighty-five dollars per month. So if they're getting an extra twenty-five dollars per clean from us, and on average probably doing six to eight cleanings per month, that's going to more than pay for their insurance premium cost, and it's going to benefit them elsewhere in their business because they probably don't only work for you. And our last major discussion topic is payments. If you have a preferred method of payment, if it's direct deposit or Zelle or Venmo and a preferred schedule for payments, then make sure that the cleaner understands and is okay with that upfront. We pay most of our cleaners on a monthly basis, which works well for us because we reconcile booking activity and expenses per property on a monthly basis. We do direct deposits and that means the cleaner will have to supply bank details to you. And we're also insistent that we have a W-9 on file because we need to report our payments to them on a 1099 at the end of the year to properly file our own taxes. So basically what that means is no cash payments under the table. No, it's just, it's not worth the tax explanation or workarounds that we would have to try and make. You know, if you're running a busy vacation rental, cleaning an expense is gonna be a big chunk of the revenue that you're handling. Now you're armed with a solid list of discussion topics to ask a prospective new cleaner. And a list of options on where you can go to look for a cleaner for your short-term rental property. Feel free to leave any comments or questions in the section below. If they're quick, we'll answer them here, but we also do read them all and we round them up for a bigger Q&A video, which we'll do in the future. So make sure to subscribe for updates on that and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.